Violent anti-immigration riots continue in the UK. The protests first broke seven days ago after anti-immigration misinformation campaign stoked outrage over a stabbing attack that left three children dead in northern England. Nearly 400 people have been arrested since the riots began and dozens more protests are expected today. Joe Rogan did not hold back his criticism of UK Prime Minister Keir Starmer. Rogan, known for his unfiltered and often controversial takes, focused on what he sees as a significant failure in leadership by Starmer, particularly regarding the ongoing immigration crisis in the UK. According to Rogan, Starmer's inability to effectively address the country's immigration challenges. Uh, this is not a law-free zone. And I think that's clear from the prosecutions and sentencing. Today we're due sentencing for online behavior. That's a reminder to everyone that whether you're directly involved or whether you're remotely involved, uh, you're culpable um, and you will be put before the courts if you've broken the law. Has not only weakened his leadership, but has also fueled the rising tide of anti-immigration sentiment, leading to widespread unrest and riots. Before we start, hit the like and subscribe buttons for more exclusive news. Rogan's comments are particularly striking given the context in which they were made. The United Kingdom has been grappling with complex immigration issues for years, but recent events have brought these tensions to a boiling point. The country has witnessed a surge in anti-immigration protests, some of which have escalated into violent riots. Rogan argues that Starmer's failure to take decisive action on immigration has allowed these sentiments to fester. I want to go to the UK because I'm afraid of deportation in Germany. Already they tried to deport me and that's why I left. Ahmed's one of a number of Iraqi Kurds Skies met recently who've paid smugglers to get to the UK after Germany toughened up its deportation rules. Ultimately erupting in the form of public disorder. Joe Rogan is not a politician, nor does he claim to be an expert on British politics, but his platform gives him significant influence. His views on leadership resonate with millions of listeners who appreciate his straightforward and often provocative approach. In discussing Starmer, Rogan drew parallels between leadership and crisis management, emphasizing that a leader's primary role is to address the most pressing issues facing their country. From Rogan's perspective, Keir Starmer has failed in this regard. He believes that Starmer has not only been slow to react to the growing immigration crisis, but has also lacked the vision and conviction needed to implement effective solutions. Rogan's criticism is rooted in the idea that a strong leader should be proactive, taking bold steps to address problems before they spiral out of control. I have a great deal of sympathy with those who are so desperate as to uh, put their children in dinghies or even children's paddling pools and try to, try to cross the, the channel. But I have to say that what they are doing is, uh, is falling prey to, to criminal gangs and they are breaking the law. They're also undermining the, the legitimate claims of others who would seek asylum in this country. In contrast, he views Starmer as overly cautious, more concerned with political correctness and party unity than with making the tough decisions necessary to protect the nation. Rogan's critique touches on a broader debate about what constitutes effective leadership in the modern political landscape. For Rogan, and many who share his views, effective leadership is not about appeasing different factions or maintaining the status quo. Instead, it is about taking clear, decisive action in the face of challenges, even if that means risking unpopularity. This is where Rogan believes Starmer has fallen short, particularly on the issue of immigration. 52% of people said they think Labour aren't telling the truth about what they really think about immigration. Not much better for the Conservatives, only 49% here, so not a big difference, saying the same thing about them. The Lib Dems doing slightly better, maybe they spelled it out better. But every region, every demographic distrusted the main two parties here on this point. To understand the full weight of Rogan's criticism, it is essential to delve into the specifics of the immigration crisis in the UK. Over the past decade, the UK has seen a significant increase in immigration, driven by a combination of economic factors, conflict, and global migration trends. This influx has placed considerable strain on public services, housing, and social cohesion, leading to growing public concern. The Brexit referendum in 2016 was, in many ways, a response to these concerns. 
Many Britons voted to leave the European Union in the hope of regaining control over their borders and reducing immigration. Um, a word as well, uh, Theo, on the uh, the border force yesterday, UK border force returning mm. channel migrants to France for the first time. This sparked a quite, I don't, I'm sure you're more than aware of this, it just sparked a lot of people say, wow, they're actually doing what Reform UK said they should do. They're returning migrants back to France. But of course, the story, as it turned out, wasn't quite as uh, black and white as that. However, the reality has been far more complicated. Post-Brexit, the UK government has struggled to implement an immigration policy that satisfies both the demands of the public and the needs of the economy. Keir Starmer, who became the leader of the Labour Party in 2020, has faced immense pressure to address these issues. However, his approach has been criticized as being overly cautious and lacking in clear direction. Starmer has advocated for a more compassionate and inclusive immigration policy focusing on the rights of refugees and asylum seekers. This summer has seen record numbers of illegal immigrants making their way to Britain in boats. A record 409 people were found on vessels yesterday and intercepted by border force control. Calm seas and clear skies has meant that the UK has become a top target for people traffickers in 2020. While this stance aligns with traditional labour values, it has not resonated with a significant portion of the electorate who are more concerned with reducing immigration levels and addressing the perceived threats to national security and cultural identity. Rogan's criticism of Starmer centers on the belief that the Prime Minister has not done enough to address these concerns. By focusing on the humanitarian aspects of immigration, Rogan argues, Starmer has neglected the broader implications for British society. This, in turn, has allowed anti-immigration sentiments to grow unchecked, culminating in the recent riots. The rise of anti-immigration sentiment in the UK is not a new phenomenon. We have been talking about immigration, but what does the public think? Well, an exclusive poll for Sky News has found that across the country, 43% of people asked thought that immigration has a negative impact on British society. That's compared to 35% here who say it has a positive impact. So clear difference but it has gained significant traction in recent years. This sentiment is fueled by a combination of economic anxieties, cultural tensions, and a perception that the government is not doing enough to protect the interests of native-born citizens. The result has been a series of protests, some of which have turned violent, as groups express their frustration with the current state of affairs. Joe Rogan's argument is that these riots are a direct consequence of Keir Starmer's failure to address the root causes of the immigration crisis. According to Rogan, by failing to take a firm stand on immigration... Across Europe, migration is resurging as a key political battleground. It's propelling support for far-right parties and is fermenting spats between EU member states, aggravating divides between the countries migrants travel through and those they want to reach. Starmer has allowed these tensions to escalate, creating an environment where extremist views can thrive. The riots, Rogan suggests, are a symptom of a much deeper problem, a problem that Starmer has not only failed to solve, but has arguably exacerbated through his inaction. Rogan's analysis taps into a broader narrative that is gaining traction in both the UK and other parts of the world. This narrative suggests that mainstream political leaders are out of touch with the concerns of ordinary citizens, particularly on issues like immigration. In this view, leaders like Starmer are seen as more interested in preserving their political careers and maintaining party unity than in addressing the real and pressing issues facing their countries. The consequences of what Rogan sees as Starmer's inaction on immigration are that if you come here illegally, you can't claim asylum. You can't benefit from our modern slavery protections. You can't make spurious human rights claims. And you can't stay. People, along with everyone else, who are trying to process exactly what this means, not just for British politics or international law, but for them. ...are not limited to the immediate fallout of the riots. There are broader implications for the UK's social fabric, its political landscape, and its position on the global stage. Rogan argues that by failing to address immigration, Starmer is not only weakening his own leadership, but also undermining the trust that the public has in government institutions. One of the most significant consequences of this perceived inaction is the erosion of social cohesion. 
Immigration, particularly when it is perceived as uncontrolled or poorly managed, can lead to divisions within society. These divisions are often along cultural, ethnic, and economic lines, creating a sense of us versus them that can be deeply damaging to the social fabric. Rogan suggests that Starmer's failure to address these divisions has allowed them to grow. Age groups, 54% of 18 to 24 year olds thinks that immigration has a positive effect. But the older you get, the lower this number comes down. When you get to 65 and over, only 20% of those people thought immigration is good for society. Leading to the kind of unrest that the UK is currently experiencing. Moreover, the political consequences of Starmer's handling of immigration could be far reaching. As anti-immigration sentiment grows, there is a risk that more extreme political parties and movements will gain traction. These groups often position themselves as the true defenders of national interests, appealing to those who feel that mainstream politicians have failed them. If Starmer continues on his current path, Rogan warns, the UK could see a shift in its political landscape, with more voters turning to these alternative movements in search of solutions. In critiquing Starmer, Joe Rogan offers his vision of what effective leadership should look like in the face of a crisis. For Rogan, effective leadership is about more than just managing day-to-day -day governance. It is about having a clear vision for the future and the courage to take bold actions to achieve it. This vision is particularly important when dealing with complex and contentious issues like immigration. We run down the beach, we see dozens of people. Men, women and children, all from Kurdistan, intent on reaching Britain. They're waiting for their ride, called a taxi boat, a smuggler's dinghy that's already picked up dozens of passengers. Rogan argues that a strong leader would have taken a more decisive approach to the immigration crisis. This could have involved implementing stricter immigration controls, increasing deportations of those in the country illegally, or even reconsidering the UK's refugee and asylum policies. While such measures would undoubtedly be controversial, Rogan believes that they would demonstrate a commitment to addressing the concerns of the British people. Furthermore, Rogan suggests that effective leadership also involves clear communication. A strong leader should be able to articulate their vision in a way that resonates with the public, building trust and confidence in their ability to govern. If you come here illegally, you will be detained and swiftly removed. People need to know that coming here illegally on a boat will not lead them to a life in the United Kingdom. The government's message of deterrence is echoing around the migrant camps of Dunkirk, literally. In Rogan's view, Starmer has failed to do this on immigration. His messaging has been muddled, leaving many voters unsure of where he stands on the issue. This lack of clarity, Rogan argues, has only exacerbated the situation, allowing anti-immigration groups to fill the void with their own narratives. Joe Rogan's criticism of Keir Starmer is not just about the specifics of immigration policy in the UK. It also speaks to broader trends in global politics. Across the world, many countries are grappling with similar issues, from immigration and refugee crises to rising populism and political polarization. Rogan's comments reflect a growing frustration with traditional political leadership, which is often seen as being out of touch with the realities on the ground. In many ways, Rogan's critique of Starmer mirrors the criticisms leveled at other world leaders who have struggled to navigate these complex issues. Whether it is the debate over immigration in the United States, the refugee crisis in Europe, or the rise of nationalist movements in various parts of the world. People thought that immigration would increase under both a Labour, that's what they're talking about here, and under the Conservative government, whatever it is, despite believing that the policies of the parties is to reduce it. And finally, respondents also thought that cutting immigration would have a negative impact on the NHS, on hospitality and on social care, but a positive impact here on housing and the housing crisis. There is a sense that mainstream politicians are failing to address the root causes of these challenges. Instead, they are accused of being reactive rather than proactive, making incremental changes rather than taking bold steps to solve the underlying problems. Rogan's podcast, with its vast and diverse audience, serves as a platform for these frustrations to be aired. His critique of Starmer resonates with those who feel that their concerns are not being heard by the political establishment. I have no doubt that we will rebuild Britain with wealth created in every community. Our NHS back on its feet facing the future. 
secure borders, safer streets, everyone treated with dignity and respect at work. This sentiment is not limited to the UK. It is part of a broader global trend where voters are increasingly turning to alternative voices, whether in the form of populist leaders, independent media personalities, or grassroots movements, to express their dissatisfaction with the status quo. While Rogan's criticism of Starmer is scathing, it also hints at the potential for change. Rogan suggests that the current crisis could be an opportunity for the UK to reassess its approach to immigration and leadership. The UK is struggling to deport over 1,000 illegal immigrants back to the countries they came from, according to government ministers. The Home Office said a backlog of over 1,000 people had formed in attempting to remove them from the UK back to countries where they had already claimed asylum. In Rogan's view, the failures of the current administration highlight the need for a new kind of leadership, one that is willing to take decisive action on difficult issues, even at the risk of political backlash. Rogan believes that the immigration crisis could serve as a catalyst for broader political change in the UK. If Starmer and his government are unable or unwilling to address the root causes of the problem, Rogan argues, then the electorate may begin to look elsewhere for leadership. This could mean a rise in support for alternative political parties, particularly those that advocate for stricter immigration controls and a more nationalist approach to governance. Rogan's vision for change is not just about immigration policy, it is about a fundamental shift in how political leaders approach their roles. He advocates for a more proactive, assertive style of leadership, one that is focused on solving problems rather than managing them. That is the taxi boat that's just arrived to pick these people up. That boat is already really full. But as you can see, they're marching out through the water. Now, the reason they're doing that is they know the police can't stop them once they're in the water. But actually, there's not a police officer to be seen. This kind of leadership, Rogan argues, is essential in a world that is becoming increasingly complex and interconnected. One of the key points Rogan raises in his critique of Starmer is the importance of public opinion in shaping policy. Rogan argues that a leader who ignores or downplays the concerns of the public is doomed to fail. In the case of immigration, Rogan believes that Starmer has not taken the public's concerns seriously enough, resulting in a growing sense of frustration and disillusionment among voters. Rogan's perspective on public opinion reflects a broader trend in modern politics, where leaders are increasingly expected to be responsive to the views of their constituents. But now our country has voted decisively for change, for national renewal, and a return of politics to public service. When the gap between the sacrifices made by people and the service they receive from politicians grows this big. In an age of social media and instant communication, public opinion can shift rapidly and politicians who fail to keep up with these changes risk losing support. For Rogan, effective leadership means not only understanding the concerns of the public, but also being willing to act on them, even if it means making difficult or unpopular decisions. In the context of immigration, Rogan argues that the public's concerns are rooted in legitimate fears about the impact of uncontrolled migration on society. These fears include economic anxieties, such as job competition and strain on public services, as well as cultural concerns about the integration of immigrants into British society. Rogan suggests that Starmer has been too focused on the moral and humanitarian aspects of immigration without fully addressing these other concerns. Rogan's emphasis on public opinion raises important questions about the role of democracy in shaping immigration policy. But we need to move forward together. Now, this wound, this lack of trust, can only be healed by actions, not words. I know that. In a democratic society, the views of the majority should, in theory, guide the decisions of elected leaders. However, immigration is a complex issue that often involves balancing competing interests and values. Rogan's critique highlights the tension between responding to public opinion and making policy decisions that are in the long-term interests of the country. Joe Rogan is acutely aware of the power of media in shaping public opinion and influencing political debates. 
As one of the most influential podcasters in the world, Rogan himself plays a significant role in this process. His podcast reaches millions of listeners, many of whom are likely to be influenced by his views on immigration and leadership. Rogan's criticism of Starmer, therefore, is not just an expression of his personal opinion, it is also an attempt to shape the broader public conversation about these issues. Look, public service is a privilege, and that your government should treat every single person in this country with respect. Rogan's role in the media landscape reflects a broader trend in which traditional news outlets are increasingly being challenged by alternative media voices. These voices, often independent and less constrained by editorial standards, can offer perspectives that are not always represented in the mainstream media. Rogan's podcast, with its freewheeling format and willingness to tackle controversial topics, is a prime example of this shift. The impact of media on the immigration debate is significant. In the UK, as in many other countries, public opinion on immigration is shaped by how the issue is portrayed in the media. If you voted Labour yesterday, we will carry the responsibility of your trust as we rebuild our country. But whether you voted Labour or not, in fact, especially if you did not, I say to you directly, my government will serve you. Sensationalist reporting often focused on the most extreme cases can contribute to a climate of fear and hostility towards immigrants. At the same time, media coverage that emphasizes the humanitarian aspects of immigration can help to foster a more compassionate and inclusive approach. Rogan's critique of Starmer can be seen as part of a broader media narrative that is critical of the UK's handling of immigration. This narrative is not limited to Rogan's podcast. It is echoed in other alternative media outlets, as well as in the more conservative segments of the mainstream media. By amplifying these criticisms, Rogan is contributing to a growing sense of dissatisfaction with the current government's approach to immigration. Joe Rogan's criticism of Keir Starmer and the UK government's handling of immigration is not limited to the specific context of British politics. Immigration is a global issue, and the challenges faced by the UK are mirrored in many other countries around the world. Rogan's comments, therefore, have broader implications for how we think about immigration and leadership on a global scale. Politics can be a force for good. We will show that. We've changed the Labour Party, returned it to service, and that is how we will govern. Country first, party second. Yet, if I'm honest, service is merely a precondition of hope. In many developed countries, immigration has become one of the most contentious and polarizing issues of our time. The movement of people across borders, driven by factors such as conflict, economic disparity, and climate change, has created significant challenges for governments. These challenges include managing the economic and social impacts of immigration, addressing concerns about national security, and balancing the rights of immigrants with the interests of native-born citizens. Rogan's critique of Starmer reflects a growing frustration with how political leaders are handling these challenges. In the US, for example, immigration has been a central issue in recent elections, with both major parties offering starkly different approaches. And it is surely clear to everyone that our country needs a bigger reset, a rediscovery of who we are, because no matter how fierce the storms of history, one of the great strengths of this nation has always been our ability to navigate away to calmer waters. In Europe, the refugee crisis has sparked intense debates about border control, asylum policies, and the integration of immigrants into host societies. Rogan's argument is that the failures of leaders like Starmer are not unique to the UK. They are part of a broader pattern of political inaction and indecision on immigration. He suggests that this pattern is contributing to a rise in populist movements, as voters seek out leaders who are willing to take a firmer stance on immigration. This trend, Rogan warns, could have significant consequences for global stability and the future of democracy. Recognizing when we must change course. For too long now, we've turned a blind eye as millions slid into greater insecurity. Nurses, builders, drivers, carers, people doing the right thing, 
working harder every day. One of the more complex aspects of Joe Rogan's critique of Keir Starmer is the ethical dimension of immigration policy. Rogan acknowledges that immigration is not just a political issue. It is also a moral and humanitarian one. The UK, like many other countries, has a long history of providing refuge to those fleeing persecution and conflict. This humanitarian tradition is enshrined in international law and is a core value for many people. I want to say very clearly to those people, not this time. Changing a country is not like flicking a switch. The world is now a more volatile place. This will take a while. But have no doubt that the work of change begins immediately. However, Rogan argues that there is a tension between the ethical imperative to help those in need and the practical realities of managing immigration in a way that is sustainable and fair. He suggests that political leaders like Starmer have been too focused on the ethical side of the equation without fully considering the practical implications of their policies. This, Rogan argues, has led to a situation where immigration is not being managed effectively, with negative consequences for both immigrants and the host society. Rogan's critique raises important questions about how we balance the ethical and practical dimensions of immigration policy. Have no doubt that we will rebuild Britain with wealth created in every community. Our NHS back on its feet facing the future. Secure borders, safer streets, everyone treated with dignity and respect at work. On the one hand, there is a strong moral argument for providing asylum to those who are fleeing violence and persecution. On the other hand, there are legitimate concerns about the capacity of countries to absorb large numbers of immigrants without straining public services, social cohesion, and national security. Rogan suggests that a more balanced approach is needed, one that recognizes the ethical imperatives of immigration while also addressing the practical challenges. This could involve stricter controls on who is allowed to enter the country, as well as more robust measures to ensure that immigrants are able to integrate into society. At the same time, Rogan argues, there needs to be a greater emphasis on addressing the root causes of immigration. The opportunity of clean British power, cutting your energy bills for good. And brick by brick, we will rebuild the infrastructure of opportunity the world-class schools and colleges, the affordable homes that I know are the ingredients of hope for working people. Such as conflict and poverty, so that fewer people are forced to flee their homes in the first place. Looking to the future, Joe Rogan's critique of Keir Starmer and the UK government's handling of immigration raises important questions about the direction of immigration policy in the UK. As the country continues to grapple with the challenges of immigration, it is clear that the status quo is not sustainable. The recent riots and rising anti-immigration sentiment are signs that the public is increasingly dissatisfied with the current approach. Rogan's comments suggest that there is a growing appetite for change among the electorate. This could take the form of more stringent immigration controls. I want to go to the UK because I'm afraid of deportation in Germany. Already they try to deport me and that's why I left. Ahmed's one of a number of Iraqi Kurds Sky's met recently who've paid smugglers to get to the UK after Germany toughened up its deportation rules. A re-evaluation of the UK's refugee and asylum policies, or even a shift towards a more nationalist approach to governance. Whatever form it takes, it is clear that the immigration issue will continue to be a central focus of British politics in the coming years. For Keir Starmer, the challenge will be to navigate these pressures while staying true to his party's values and principles. This will not be an easy task, given the polarized nature of the immigration debate. 52% of people said they think Labour aren't telling the truth about what they really think about immigration. Not much better for the Conservatives, only 49% here, so not a big difference, saying the same thing about them. The Lib Dems doing slightly better, maybe they spelled it out better. But every region, every demographic distrusted the main two parties here on this point. And the deep divisions within the Labour Party itself. However, as Rogan's critique makes clear, Inaction is not an option. If Starmer is to restore public confidence in his leadership, 
he will need to take bold and decisive steps to address the immigration crisis. If you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel. Also, could you leave your comments below and tell us, do you agree with Joe Rogan's criticism of Keir Starmer? We want to hear from you. Thank you for watching and see you next time.